grow the farm up and welcome to our new digs this is grow the farm up studios and an undisclosed location high across the fruited plains as we are the seat of revel food power of farmers everywhere of food feed and seed that are saying no we don't like this monoculture of soy and corn as our only options and choices and we're going to do things a little bit differently and bring you a higher nutritional value food product to your dinner plate and healthier food products to your table. And we're going to do that by bypassing the constraints that the large ag conglomerates uh, have uh, put upon the American farmer and the American consumer uh, by naturally breeding plants and continually improving the natural biology of our soil. Uh, it's important to understand that traditional plant breeding has been really focused only on yield uh, for the last two to three decades. And the important thing to remember is that yield is what farmers are paid off of right now. They are not paid based off of the protein value or the fiber value of their crop. Um, and so we've seen traditional breeding techniques almost at odds with what you would call nutritional breeding techniques. And so we are now beginning to breed plants that have a higher nutritional value and yield as much or more than the conventional plants of the day, which is an exciting thing in agriculture, definitely. I mean, healthier food ingredients, you know, naturally bred crops. We're working on higher protein high and higher oleic soybeans. We're working on kiwana, which is, uh, you know, also linseed and flax. Uh, some of you all know that is flaxseed. You know, it's richer in dietary fiber, protein, B vitamins, minerals. I mean, in amounts that are much, much greater than existing crops or existing food ingredients. And amaranth is a plant that uh, is, uh, is, it's such a hardy, hardy plant family. And they're breeding that now to uh, grow a harvestable berry. That's interesting. An amaranth family plant with a harvestable berry. I mean, an amaranth can put out millions of seeds per plant. So it'll be very interesting to see where that goes. Uh, you know, but there's a number of different uh, crops other than just corn and soy. And it's important to understand that the large ag conglomerates have really developed a monoculture of corn and soy and a little bit of wheat. I mean, yeah, there's, you know, 50 different crops grown in the United States. Sure, I'm not suggesting that. But there is corn and soy in about 95% of what you're eating, uh, it is especially in the processed foods. There's just no, no two ways around that. And so, you know, this all leads to getting to the higher quality food ingredients, which is, you know, really what we're after. I mean, the higher pro quality sources of protein and fiber I mean, that's really what is driving Grow the Farm Up. Uh, you know, we've talked about a fully traceable audit trail uh, for your food labels. We've talked about farmers independently growing their own seed. We've talked a little bit about Lava Seed Farms, Seed Tech Genetics, GMOs, non-GMOs, organics, food labels to your smartphone, corn and soybeans, uh, different types of seed, how they're grown. We've seen the videos. We've talked about how do you get to 400 and 500 bushel corn. And uh, we've talked about third-party independent labels for food that consumers can trust. And that's important because right now there's not a lot of consumer trust in these large food companies. And consumer, I don't blame you. I'm a consumer too. I'm a producer of it, but I'm also a consumer of it. That's why I started this channel. This is important to me. It's a worthwhile goal to attempt to achieve a higher nutritional value, healthier food supply. 
It's, uh, you know, we've done the research and arrived at a simple truth. And you'll have to forgive me. My producer hasn't got my soundboard in here yet. Behind the glass over there. Yeah, you want to adjust the lights for me? You know, I got these sweet new digs now here at the Grow the Farm Up studio. And my producer over there is, I don't know what he's producing, but, you know, you, you watch these guys on XM radio sometimes or just any radio show and they put a, a camera up and it's like they're broadcasting from a freaking closet. I mean, why don't they just, you know, do it in their living room? I mean, you know, we got some space here at Grow the Farm Up Studios. It's a nice thing about being out in the middle of nowhere, you know. We just kind of thought, eh, let's just put some shenanigans on the wall for the first one. We'll see how it goes, you know. I, I told him let's not go full Bennigans. But, you know, we, we've got some uh, collectibles over here to my left hand, over my, uh, my left shoulder. Uh, though I can't guarantee you that those collectibles will maintain their value or go up in value over time. My kids got them for me some years ago, and I just never took them out of the package. So they're fully unpackaged John Deere little toy implements. Uh, and we also have what's known as the heirloom. This is a 1963 actual functional 164th size model of a 1963 John Deere 6600. I mean, still works. Fully functional as a toy. This is probably thicker steel than they make their current combines out of. What? Who am I kidding? They don't make them out of steel anymore. Everything's made out of plastic, right? Right? No, I mean, no kidding. But... You know, we've done the research. Let's get back to this. And we've arrived at a simple truth that highly unsaturated essential fatty acids combined with high quality protein. OK, so that's uh, that's highly unsaturated essential fatty acids combined with high quality protein makes these fats more easily soluble in the body. If you haven't computed that yet that means that these fats are more easily broken down turned into energy and they don't build up on your gut and make america fat <laughs> that's that simple i mean we all rely on uh essential fatty acids to survive we do and we've also found uh, through these uh, unsaturated essential fatty acids with these new uh, crops that we've been uh, working on breeding, uh, some definite tissue cleansing effects, uh, you know, a ton of natural tissue cleansing effects uh, with these uh, more soluble uh, essential fatty acids and high proteins. And also some positive results on diseases and autoimmune diseases. I, I'm not going to go as far as to suggest that uh, these foods are medicines or cures for, uh, you know, major diseases or anything like that. But let me put it this way. They're, they're not causing diseases. You know, they're, they seem to be helping with inflammation and things like that when tested. And that's something uh, that is, again, absolutely... Uh, worth striving for. I mean, we've began to look uh, for viable alternative uh, alternatives to big ag's monopoly, uh, the corn and soy monopoly, and what that high fructose corn syrup and uh, soy oil has done is it's taken those fatty acids that we rely on to uh, survive, and it has turned them into a modern breeding has been about gaining yield only for the farmer so that these seed companies could sell more product. Well, in the meantime, uh, nutritional value of our actual corn and soybeans, the monoculture of crops that we essentially grow across most of the Midwest, the nutritional value has been falling and falling and falling and falling every year. 
I mean, and nobody's been paying attention to it. And it's re actually made our crop worth less and less and less uh, as demand for protein has gone up and up and up around the world. So let's start putting more protein back into the food that we're already growing. That makes a lot of sense, but it runs absolutely contrary to traditional uh, plant breeding because traditional plant breeding is only about yield. And so this is all about changing the paradigm of how people purchase and sell commodities. What if I told you that we could change the paradigm to where consumers purchased their food based on the nutritional value and not just buy the bag or buy the pound and producers or farmers could sell their commodity based on the nutritional value per pound or per unit or per bushel rather than just the weight that would be worth a premium to everybody and that is really the future of the food supply as we look for viable alternatives to the fact that 90 to 95 percent of everything you eat has got corn and soy in it with these not so soluble uh, saturated fatty acids and it's really simple we can really change uh, the way that the human body digests saturated fats and uh, soluble proteins uh, if we just simply change our breeding techniques and a company named uh, Benson Hill which uh, I believe they're Benson Hill Biosystems right now they've gone through a number of changes in the last few years but Benson Hill uh, Biosystems soon to be Benson Hill Seeds are doing probably some of the best cutting edge research on this that I've seen to date. It's research that uh, keeps pace with ours and, uh, dare I say, may outpace us. I'll put a link to Benson Hill's website on this video. And if you're not familiar with them and you're looking for alternatives uh, to healthier food supply and understanding that uh, there are companies out there that are trying to uh, put a higher nutritional value food ingredient. You know, we're, we're putting, you know, high, high olic soybeans, for example, or, uh, you know, uh, high protein soybeans. I mean, that's a starting point. And, you know, we, we are looking at, uh, you know, other crops. I, did I mention, uh, you know, what, uh, what is it? Uh, flaxseed, linseed, you know, some of y'all know it as flaxseed. I mean, it's richer in dietary fiber, protein, vitamin B, and minerals in amounts that are, are far exceeding existing crops. I mean, there's an amaranth that grows a harvestable berry. That's interesting. The amaranth plant family is now being bred to grow a harvestable berry. Hmm. And that also has these... Uh, highly unsaturated essential fatty acids that we combine with the high quality protein bred into each one of these plants and makes these fats much more easily soluble in the human body. I mean, I, people say we have a, uh, uh, I wouldn't call it an epidemic, but we've got a lot of processed food on the shelves and there's a lot of corn and soy in them and that's fine. But let's make the corn and soy more easily digestible to the human body. And you'll see uh, a lot healthier people all around. And I, why, why not? Why would you not do that? I mean, it, it, it makes perfect sense to me. I mean, that's why I'm looking at this saying, that, yep, that's the future of the food supply. You need to provide your consumer with what they want and your consumer wants the healthiest possible product they can get I unless you know I'm missing something uh, I want to feed my family the healthiest product I can get I don't want to uh, go out and buy a bunch of processed canned foods uh, you know we're we're trained that what Campbell's chunky soup soup that eats like a meal I mean what what is that you know, soldiers eat dinty more. 
like four years old, uh, you know, uh, without even heating it up. There's so many preservatives in there and there's so many unsoluble fats in there and fatty acids that just uh, clog your arteries. It's, it's very simple. We don't, we don't need to all change our diets to kale. We need to wake up to the fact that we can simply begin breeding our existing soybeans and corn crops and add four or five other different types of crops to get some of these richer dietary fiber and proteins into our food ingredients and bingo uh, you've got a healthier nation and farmers will quickly adapt to this and consumers will quickly adapt to this and I think it really is a viable alternative to Big Ag's monopoly on corn and soybean and their dietary monoculture. I mean, we, we are living in a dietary monoculture of corn and soy with unsoluble fatty acids and people sit down and eat, uh, you know, out of a box sometimes at night and then go to the gym the next day and wonder why well, it's just a vicious cycle. You, you shouldn't, we shouldn't have the, the levels of obesity that we have uh, in not just the United States, but in many areas around the world. But the United States especially, uh, you know, we've always had a plentiful food supply. And, you know, myself, I could, I could always, you know, who can't drop 10, 20, 30 pounds, 10, 5, 8, whatever your goal is, right? You know, you want to do it? That's the way to do it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just work out and run. Sure, absolutely. I mean, you can't just sit in the chair for, you know, seven days a week and expect not to weigh 320 pounds and eat potato chips. Sure, but, you know, it. it's almost like we're, our food supply is working against us. I mean, you know, it, we, we need to get back to a place uh, that people will accept you know, the GMO and non-GMO debate has polarized the agricultural world so much that uh, it really has left it in a state of, I would say, near disrepair to the point that this uh, has gotten missed for 15 years. And people wonder why our food supply, um, you know, as plentiful as it is, and, and it's, it's, it's nutritious, it's healthy, it's, it's safe. Don't be afraid to eat any food out there that you find on the, I'm, I'm not sounding an alarmist viewpoint here. This isn't going to change overnight. What I'm saying is this is great news. Such great news. We got a studio to tell you guys about it, that uh, we're going to begin breeding uh, the existing food ingredients that you, we all use today uh, for uh, more soluble fatty acids that break down in your body more simply, uh, simply more easily. I mean, how great is that? You know, if, if you're a big uh, uh, runner or big on working out, let's say you work out an hour a day. Well, you know what? If we can get these food ingredients into your diet, now all of a sudden you only need to work out 20 minutes a day to get the same exact effects and so on and so forth. I mean, it, it really is, uh, you know, a, a deep, deep subject that we could talk about for hours and hours, but we're 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 not gonna we're not gonna dive into this thing for six hours here. Uh, Grow the farm up here in our studios uh, worldwide now is the world's first platform for food consumers to talk with food producers, and we are 25, 50 years behind. We're so many years behind with our consumers talking to our producers. And it's our job as producers to provide you, the consumer, with exactly what you want. And somewhere along the way, that got lost with the large ag conglomerate monopolies. They have control of the food ingredients, and they're shoving them down our throats. It's time for you, the consumer, to take the control back and request from us, the producer. And I'm a producer. I'm an identity preserved producer of food, feed, and seed and have the capacity to fill orders and am right now on food ingredients of these specialty crops that we've just discussed. Uh, different communities, different individuals, different companies uh, have come to us and asked that these be grown, researched, and moved forward on. 
And so it's, there are alternatives out there, uh, you know, the, and it's coming quicker than we, than you think, but we are years and years behind with our discussion between, you know, the folks that are consuming the food and the folks that are growing the food. I think there's a massive disconnect and that's where we get some of the sensational uh, discussions about GMOs versus non-GMOs and organic versus conventional. And I think there's a little bit of misunderstanding uh, on the part of uh, really uh, all different sides. Um, you've heard me say it once, I'll, I'll say it again. I grow all different ways. I farm, uh, you know, I farmed organically, I farm conventionally, and I farm non-GMO. And I farm GMO and you know, I do all of them and all of them have their advantages and all of them have their drawbacks. And it's not a matter of what I think is right or wrong. Hey, producer soundboard and you want to adjust the light a little bit. Well, now that we have a studio, you know, yeah, I'm getting bossy, you know, well, you know, you, you, don't, you don't have a producer to just stand there by, Oh, Oh, that, that is what you have a producer for? To just stand there behind the glass? You know I can't hear you. You're just waving at me. Screwing up, screwing up, grow the farm ups. First initial show from the seat of rebel power. How dare you, producer, you know? So anyway, consumers out there, tell me what you want. Tell me what you want. And you know what? I'll provide you with a fully traceable farm to table audit trail of how that crop got from our farm to your table and not just our farm, but farms all around the United States and the world to your table. Did it start as a GM or a non GM seed? Was it grown organically, conventionally? What herbicides or pesticides, if any, were used or sprayed? What fertilizers were used? down to the microbes in the soil. I mean, you can go as deep as you want with uh, blockchain audit trail food labeling and then make it scannable to your smart device to where you'll have in the palm of your hand as much information as you as a consumer are willing to pay for. I mean, that's what the market always does. It, it finds its, its line. You know, if, if you want to get a pamphlet that's 36 pages thick with every uh, bag of potato chips that you buy, so be it. But recognize instead of, you know, whatever, $2.99 a bag, they're going to be $7.99 a bag. It's going to be like going to the pharmacy. You know, it's going to be a little bit ridiculous. So we should probably, uh, you know, really, we, we've discussed uh, labeling food on the seed level. I grow the farm up a lot. I suggest that uh, if you know of anybody that could benefit from this or anybody that uh, is interested in food labeling, pass this on. There's been a lot of discussion going on about uh, food labeling on Grow the Farm Up as it's producers and consumers that are talking with each other. I mean, it, it, it really, it's ignited something that, you know, we've only been around for about a month and, uh, you know, we're getting like, I don't know, 10, 20, 50, 100, 150 views on every video we're putting out more and more and more. I, you know, went from what, what, what's the deal? You start with like, what, 10 subscribers and you go to 30, 50, 100. I'm, I was surprised how quick it kind of, kind of got going. But, you know, when you're talking about GMOs, non GMOs, you know, trade wars, uh, direct payments to farmers and the reasons for them. Uh, you know, higher nutritional value products onto your dinner plate. I mean, you're talking about the cutting edge of agriculture here. And that's, you know, something else we've talked about, you know, a lot of seed farms and seed tech genetics. Uh, you know, a lot of seed farms has been on the, the, every single revolution in agriculture that has taken place. A seed farms has been right there. And we have been for 80, really, the farm's been around for, 100 plus years we've been incorporated as law seed farms for uh, 82 years going on now this year and um, even when they started hybridizing corn back in the 20s 30s and 40s the lobber family was there 
And there's a reason that the Lauber family is here now, um, uh, the vanguard of this revolution in the way that uh, your uh, food products are going to change for the better. And also at Grow the Farm Up, you know, uh, we're going to uh, uh, enable all of our viewers with information so that you can make informed decisions about food labels because food labels are it's almost more of a marketing food label gimmick right now going on uh there there's a label out there called the ANSI corp i believe and they will label your product as non-gmo i looked this up my wife brought home a thing of bananas the other day it's not gmo well first of all there's not even gmo bananas but i i digress when when there's no non-gmo or when there's no GMO alternative, what's the point in labeling it non-GMO? It's a marketing thing. And you look at the label, and the label literally says, this GMO, non-GMO label means that this, these, uh, this produce was grown in a way that was not harmful to the earth. It was grown sustainably. That's a non-GMO label. People are looking at that, picking up, going, oh, I'm buying non-GMO, and thinking that they're getting a healthier or a better, mm -mm. no, that's that's not the definition of non-GMO. Just being farmed sustainably is not the definition of non-GMO, and it's going to get very confusing for consumers. You're going to be marketed at so many different ways. Uh, we're, we're heading towards, really, what's going to be a food label war. I mean, on the grocery stores, uh, uh, excuse me, on the grocery shelves, you know, grocery store shelves, uh, you know, you need to be able to tell the difference between a marketing gimmick and a real label, an independent label you can trust, you know, a resource. And Grow the Farm Up is a resource for you to get the best information possible so that you can put the healthiest, most nutritious a meal on your family's dinner table. I don't know why we would do it any other way, you know? Uh, so now that we've been through an entire production season together, um, you know, we, we've produced it, and now comes the processing side of it. So stay tuned. So you can see how uh, we process and handle and get your food from our farm to your table. But growing, it's just not even the half of it. Uh, now we process it, package it, and send it to you. And so that's going to be very interesting for you guys to see. And some of you might actually be more interested in that. Uh, and actually the lab work that we do over the winter than uh, the actual production. And now the, the good news and bad news of the year. The good news, um, well, I'll, we'll go, usually I do bad news first, but we'll do good news first this year. Good news is uh, the family and myself, brothers, father, and uncles, and everybody, we just knocked it out of the park this year with yields. We beat most of the county average. Our soybean yields uh, that we grew for our own seed. I, you know, I were, this video is not here to discuss that, uh, but we really just knocked it out of the park with yields this year. But most importantly, we knocked it out of the park with some nutritional research. And we knocked it out of the park with some nutritional value on uh, our, some key uh, uh, lots that we are increasing for next year. Uh, you know, we have a, a lineup of customers that are requesting uh, these higher protein uh, soybeans, and I can't replicate them fast enough. And so the good news is that we had a great, great year in that regard. The bad news is that I did a terrible, terrible job of documenting it. <laughs> I'm no cameraman. I didn't take a film -us lit course in college, as I recall, though I don't know, I'm trying to remember what I did in college. I really can't. I think that means I, I did college right, doesn't it? But the point being, I'll try to work a little better at uh, filming on the processing side. Th this isn't a, uh, a gimmick channel. This isn't a channel that's going to give you lots of graphics and woody doodies and, you know, 
loop de loos whatever you want to talk about. So, uh, you know, grow the farm up, man. Welcome to Grow the Farm Up Studios. Uh, we're bringing you higher nutritional value to your dinner plate.